coach, just compared to last season when you were sitting at this press conference, um, how are you feeling compared to a year ago? Uh, I was a little more tired uh, a year ago. Um, you know, from that day, you know, until this day, I would say that we've gained in momentum. Um, you know, the picture's more clear than maybe on, on that day. So I remember feeling pretty drained uh, last year and maybe unclear about, you know, what, what things would be. And now I think we have much greater clarity. Um, I've asked all the players that we talked to today this, but do you feel as though this team exceeded the expectations that were set for them? Um, external expectations. Yes. Yes. External expectations. But as you know, um, that was what I was most proud about. It was as a group that had expectations of themselves. You know, even though we hadn't played together and, you know, all the narrative about that, um, they, you know, they had expectations of uh, doing mostly what we did. You know, we probably fell short maybe a little bit of, of internal expectations of what we thought we were capable of. Some, some was our control, um, other, other parts, you know, injuries that, you know, that we couldn't control. But I would say from external, the expectations were probably pretty low, um, which was a little disappointing to me, but that's, that's the way it was. Uh, Coach, obviously a disappointing result on Wednesday, but at the same time, was it? How, how did you feel, kind of seeing the performances from Demiris and Nafisa, two younger players who really stepped up in kind of a very high pressure situation? Yeah, it was surprising that it was those two. Um, you know, in some ways you say it just shouldn't be, but at this point, Nafisa shouldn't surprise us uh, that that she's able to you know have some of her, her best moments and and big moments. Uh, it's great news for our franchise. Just great news. And then obviously Demiris, same thing. Uh, I, I told Demiris uh, her exit interview was the most exciting uh, and most important one that we were having. And, uh, you know, so it was good to see her in that moment, especially coming off the L.A. game. Uh, she's just shown us, you know, glimpses of, of what she can be. Uh, so it was very encouraging that those two played as well as they did against Seattle. Hey, Coach, you Hi, mentioned Jeff. a moment ago injuries. This team has been racked up with a lot of them this season. How does the injury change the way you as a head coach have to approach the game? Uh, well, you have, um, when things like that happen, you know, you, you sort of have a choice. You can pay lip service to the idea, next player up, or you can really dive into, okay, who do we have left? What do we need to do? What needs to change? You know, are we running something that doesn't suit them? Okay, we gotta, you gotta be nimble, and you gotta go over here, and you gotta say, okay, well, how is that gonna, uh, how can we bring out the best in this player that's now going to play? Um, and you don't you don't let your expectations um, go by the wayside. You know you you have to continue to um, you know um, give confidence uh, to your team. You know that we can win the next game with who we have. And and I just think we've had a group that really really bought into that. Um, you know it probably took me a while to get there. I've been doing this a long time now. Um, you become a little more unfazed by injuries because you know they're such a part of it, and especially this season. You know, the, we, we were just another team that had an injury. Um, so there was, there was less to lean on with regard to um, maybe feeling bad for yourself because there was so much around you that started in the off season just across the league. Uh, so you had to deal with it and move on. And one last question on injuries. Um, what does the team or the league have to do to address how to minimize injuries in the future? Well, I think the obvious thing is, is the, uh, the nature of the year-round play. Um, and you know, I think the, the, the league would have uh, direct control over uh, the scheduling of games. Uh, so that's their part in it. You know, the year-round play is something that's you know, obviously a bigger picture with many more layers. Um, but we can avoid schedules like the one we had last season especially given, you know, the nature of the year-round play. So being smarter about that, um, you know, players are addressing other things that, that are important to them with regard to taking care of their bodies. But I think resources are growing um, with regard to staffs and what we have available, nutritionists, uh, chefs. Uh, in our case, you know, having, having partnered with Mayo and Exos Performance, um, you know, those are the things that help. And, and uh Obviously, players are directly involved in their decision making of how they treat their bodies, and uh, so there's you know, there's a number of things that I think would go into the health. Um, obviously, a lot of things to work on going forward. But you like you said, you feel pretty good about where the team is now with its young talent. But how do you prioritize 
how things have to fall this year in terms of decision making. I guess starting with your contract being up and obviously then the return or not return of Maya Moore. Right. Uh, you know, if, you know the, it, it comes in phases. You know, so it, so we'll tackle it in the same order that it, that it arrives. Um, you know, my contract being probably the lowest on the list. Uh, it's the least of my worries. It's more about, you know, the first thing we're going to um, have is, is hopefully a, a new CBA. What does that look like? What does that mean for free agency? Uh, so, you know, being ready for um, the result of the collective bargaining. And, um, you know, what is the effect of it? You know, um, you know, do we have to approach anything differently? The timeline should be the same as long as we can reach an agreement in time for, you know, the beginning of free agency, which is after uh, January 1, beginning with the um, qualifying offers, et cetera. So being ready for th what that might bring. And so um, the preparation for that is, you know, is, is always ongoing in terms of the list of free agency, who signed extensions, who didn't, you know, years of service, you know, that's already begun. Um, so free agency is first and draft is always ongoing. Uh, and so, and, and some of it is, you know, in our case, uh, as we go through exit interviews, where are, where are our players, where are they mentally, learning, learning maybe things that we didn't know, um, and, and, and making those decisions about who stays, who goes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really no different than, than in past off seasons. Obviously the, you know, the Maya Moore piece is a little bit, you know, puts us a little more in the spotlight. Um, but, you know, I, I said this before, we're, everything that we're doing is, would be no different than if Maya were to play. So that's the good news. It's not like you can't make a decision until. Uh, so we're just uh, continuing to build our team uh, because you know that you know, if someone like Maya plays, you just drop it right in and, and go. So uh, there's nothing that's going to stand in our way of being able to prepare for next season. Having said that, though, is there a tacit agreement at least that you will know one way or another at a certain point? I think that's fair to say. We'll know one way or the other at a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> if I knew it, I would share it. No, actually, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's out there. It's out there. And, you know, just put yourself sitting in my seat of when you would like to know uh, and know that you're, you're the only – you're just one party. Um, there's – you know, there's just a lot more. There's many layers to it. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I, I know that you like it to be, you know, cut and dry, black and white, but I'm pretty darn sure it's not. Um, of all the um, people who got the big minutes, Danielle is the one whose contract is up. She says she wants to be here. Do you want her back? And on another note, what do you think this team needs position-wise to take the next step? Well, I, and I don't know if we have um, – you know, clear answers on really any of that in that um, what does free agency look like? Who's available? Um, we, we liked our team. We liked our team. And we, and we liked Danielle Robinson, you know, in terms of the cultural fit and her growth and, and how hard she worked in last offseason to put us in position, uh, as I told her, to kind of steady the franchise. Without her work, you know, that, that probably wouldn't have been possible. Um, you know, as I told the team after the game in Seattle, um, we're not going to look exactly the same. You never do. There's always change. I don't know what that change is. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time as a staff going through uh, video postseason because I think when you're outside of the season, when you look at video, you take a little bit of time away and you go back and you look at it, you start to see things a little more objectively. And so uh, spending a little more time on that and, and then each staff member writing down needs, what they see. Uh, so we haven't gone through that yet. Uh, as we're just coming off of, you know, X and O types of preparations. So um, that's, you know, forthcoming. And, and um, we certainly have some needs. You know, the good news for us is we know what we don't need. Uh, you know, I think Nafisa Collier gives us uh, a, a really bright future. Obviously, we know that Sylvia Fowles extended and wants to be here. Um, Damaris Dantas, you know, showed, you know, that, that she's a big piece of what we're doing. I'm really excited about her. Um, um, I think and probably Shepard back too. yeah I was going to say I mean you hate to talk about injured players because you don't know how it's going to go um, we're hopeful you know that we have those key pieces uh, but I just have learned that you know you can't you have to be you have to be prepared you know that what if they're not um, so there's there's a lot of good there's a lot of good there's a lot of things that we go yeah we're pretty sure we're going to keep going down that path and then we also you know when you're you know, we're, we were tied for sixth. Um, it's not, you know, 
uh, this this franchise has has goals that are that are that are um, higher than that. Um, and so, how do we best you know um, utilize personnel that we have, you know, to to make any meaningful changes that we think might be necessary? Those are all things that conversations we're going to have. Gerald, what would you say would be the key, um, one of the keys that you think having players that maybe haven't been so connected or welcomed in other teams who feel really connected to this team and want to come back, what would you say you and your coaching staff have done to create that? Um, I think the selection of people, uh, we, we've said this, that uh, we put a premium on uh, who they are and, and who they are as teammates and who they are to our community. Um, and so I think when you have a majority of your team that uh, values those intangibles, that um, word gets out, word gets out. And, you know, um, you know we, we have some non-negotiables. And, and so then if you can't fit, then we don't even talk about it. We don't, we always say our free agency list is much shorter than what you would think. Because there are some players that we just say simply would not be a good fit. And let's not even go down that path. Uh, we rely heavily on our players for those things. Um, and so anybody that, quote, got through uh, was as a result of our players saying that they wanted to play with whatever player. Um, and we'll continue to do that. And I just think that's, that's, that's something that we're proud of. Um, you know, Nafisa Collier and Jess Shepard, uh, I mean, just two, we're just so fortunate, two tremendous fits. Um, and so it's contagious. And, and maybe you might have a player that was teetering on maybe what path that they would go on when you surround them you know with, with this group it, it tends to bring out the best in them so we definitely want to continue on that path um, <coughs> excuse, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> um, in training camp and preseason the narrative was kind of centered around you having to teach so much this season um, but four months later, what do you think the biggest thing you've learned about this team has been? Um, that I, I should have pushed them more. Um, I accepted things that I would not have accepted in the past. Um, I could have accelerated the growth process by um, not taking the step back that I took as I was really trying to learn. I, I know the reasons why. Uh, I was really trying to learn about them and, and accept you know, that maybe we have to go a different path you know, than what we've known it to be. Uh, and then what you learn in doing that is um, the path that you're on was a really good one. And, and when you accept different or less, then that's exactly what you get. And so um, if I could do that again, I would, I would probably have been um, uh, a little harder on them, a little demanding about the things that were the non-negotiables. Um, but that being said, I think that's maybe part of why they had some confidence about what we were doing and why we, we had some success. Um, so I don't necessarily know that uh, we could have achieved, you know, 22 wins if I'd have, if I'd have um, you know, stuck true to some of those things. But that's what I learned. Um, um, you know, I felt like we were, you know, the, the patchwork of, of the off season. Um, it felt a little bit patchwork X and O wise. And so, you know, we've collected knowledge now about what we can be good at and how we want to play. So I'm going to feel better about going into next season because we didn't know what we had uh, for, for much of it. Um, and then obviously the injuries, you know, kind of, you know, having to tweak things constantly. So I felt a little more unsettled, uh, you know, each, each of the uh, – you didn't know every night what you could count on. You know, you had to find what you could count on that night. So um, does that answer? Last year, you were very aggressive in the offseason, and you went. You took many different paths. You trade, used trades. You signed Dantas to an offer sheet, and then the, the draft. And obviously, you're going to have a very similar draft pick this year. So, but do you ex anticipate being as aggressive in trying to add to this team as you were last year when it was more of a rebuilding mode? We don't need as much, um, but I, I think that we will be uh, a team that's open to. A lot. Whereas, you know, we were so aggressive last year, or maybe it was viewed as aggressive because we just simply didn't have to do a whole lot for <laughs> an eight-year run. It was subtle changes. Um, and so then all of a sudden there was, uh, you know, more to do. There were, there were more holes to fill. Um, 
we're open to change. That's probably probably the best way to say it is we're 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 open to uh, we're not going to be afraid to you know, you know to get involved and, and learn what's available. Um, free agency, I think, is probably could, could be the most interesting thing for all of us, every team. So not just the the links, but um, that's that's the probably thing that we're we're, we're most looking forward to seeing. Um, you know how how it plays out.